Hi, my name is Chef Nick Hinder, and I'm a culinary instructor here at the College North Atlantic. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make forest mushroom risotto, roasted vegetables, and chicken supreme. All right, guys, to start, we're going to take this chicken and we're going to disassemble it. This is a great way to save money because you can actually buy a whole chicken cheaper than you can buy the individual parts and cut it yourself. And it's super simple. Let me show you how. All right, guys, we're going to start by first cutting the chicken completely in half to cut it into separate parts. You're going to need a stout knife for this, so something that has some rigidity to it. So we're going to go ahead and right through the breastbone here. Do you see this natural line that exists on the chicken? We're going to cut right through that, straight down through. And you got to use some power for this because it's going to be going through bone, just like that. Now that we have the chicken completely opened up, we can take its backbone out. This right here is the backbone going from the tail to the neck. We'll go on either side of that bone, punch down one side, and we have half a chicken. Then we do the other side to remove that bone from this side. Now we have the backbone out and a half a chicken. Now, to make chicken supreme, we're going to need the chicken breast part of it, because chicken supreme is actually a cut of the chicken breast. Now that we have half a chicken breast, we just need to separate it out. You can simply do it by simply cutting straight through the gap between the breast and the thigh, just like so. And when you do that, it's nothing but flesh, and it comes away very, very easily. So now we have our chicken breast. Our chicken breast still has its bone in it, though, so we're going to need to remove the bone to make a boneless breast. To do this, we're going to be using what's called a bony knife. This is a bony knife. It's a very, very short, stout knife that doesn't have a lot of trouble with, uh, with uh, bending. So we're going to turn over our chicken breast and remove the breast bone. We simply do this by slicing away the meat from the bone with thin, short cuts like this. Now that we have the breast bone removed, we're going to go cut through the joint where it's attached with the wing, just like so. So now we have the wing bone still attached, but the breast is completely boneless. The last thing we're going to do now is cut off the, 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 have the little drummy here for a nice presentation, simply right through the bone. And now we have a chicken supreme. All right, now that we have our chicken breast nicely cut and ready to go, we're going to start on the next process, which is making the roasted vegetables. All right, guys, to start to make our vegetables today, we're going to go ahead and use a different selection of vegetables. Yeah, you can use anything you have in your fridge. Today, I have a, a red onion. I got some multicolored peppers as well. And I found a stalk of celery in the fridge as well. So to start, we're going to get these vegetables cut up. Uh, for roasted vegetables, it's best to use um, uh, you know, a thick, thick cuts of vegetables. So you don't want to go cut too small. But, so we're going to peel our onion today simply by cutting off the ends of the onion, just like so and then slicing down through the center. Then we can slowly peel off the peel, just like so. Remove all that bad. So you should have just a fresh piece of onion there once it's all done. Now we're gonna cut this onion into a, uh, some, some coarse chop. We're gonna cut it down through the middle and then on the sides like so. So now that we have, we have ourselves some really coarse chop onion going to put our coarse chopped onion now into a steel bowl. Do the same with this one. Now comes our pepper. We're going to slice our pepper right in half. We're going to remove the seeds, just like so. Knock them all out to make sure there's no seeds left inside of our pepper. Oh no! Stickers on fruit. I hate stickers on fruit. I wish they did, didn't exist. So make sure you watch out for those. Likewise, with our onion, we're going to cut them around the same size. A simple rough chop here. Nothing too fancy. As long as it's around the same size as the onion, you're golden. So there we go. Now for our celery, this is even easier. Nice thick pieces. Just like so. All right guys, now that we have our vegetables nicely coarse chopped, we're gonna add some of our seasoning to it and some oil to it. So we're gonna start off by adding a couple good tablespoons of olive oil. Olive oil is delicious. It has a wonderful flavor and it's gonna help roast those vegetables. 
Well, to this, we're gonna add a healthy pinch of salt. So remember guys, adding salt is one of the most important things you can add to any dish. And you may be looking at me going, wow, that was a lot of salt. But you have to remember that this is probably for four or five people, and that salt broke over four or five people, it's really not that much. Uh, a little pepper as well, right on top. Whenever possible, try to use fresh ground pepper. It makes it taste so much nicer. Now that our vegetables are completely coated in salt and pepper, we're gonna give them a quick toss to make sure the oil goes everywhere. All right, now that the vegetables have been tossed in it well, we're gonna go ahead and throw them into a nice stainless steel pan, like so. And we're gonna fire them into our convection oven. You can use a regular home oven at home if you like. So now that our vegetables are roasting, we're gonna take some time to make our delicious forest risotto. Now this recipe is so great, you're gonna love it. I'm using some dried mushrooms today. In fact, these mushrooms right here are some chanterelles which I locally forested, uh, foraged for here in, in the St. John's area. We have arboreal rice, we have some fresh herbs from my garden, some Parmesan cheese, and some onion and garlic. We're gonna combine all these ingredients to form a creamy, delicious, uh, wonderful uh, uh, rice dish that is perfect for any main course that's quite elegant, but also quite inexpensive. Oh, you can't forget the chicken stock. Okay, so the first step we have to do is to rehydrate our dried mushrooms. As I said, these are mushrooms, actually these mushrooms in particular are some beautiful uh, chanterelle mushrooms that I picked. And so I dried them to preserve them. So we need to rehydrate these mushrooms in order to use them for our, our, our risotto dish. However, if you don't have dried mushrooms at home, you can use fresh mushrooms, just as great. To rehydrate our mushrooms, we're gonna get some hot boiling water, and we're simply just gonna pour our mushrooms into the hot water to rehydrate them. All right, to start our risotto, we're gonna to need to slice up an onion and dice it up. To do this, we're gonna go ahead and cut down to our root ball on this side, and this side. And now, cut the onion in half. And now we're gonna peel it. And now we're going to slice it uh, into a dice. To do this, we're gonna slice across the top of the onion like so make vertical cuts, just like that, like a deck of cards. Now we're gonna make horizontal cuts, like so. So we have it looking like this. Finally, we're going to again slice the onion into a dice. That's good. Okay, we want to start our risotto first by getting some butter into our pan, just like so. We're going to get the butter cooking, just like so, and we're going to add our onions. So by browning the butter like that, we have a lovely nutty flavor that comes through. I don't know if you can smell it, but it smells wonderful already. We're going to go ahead now and add our mushrooms. So we're going to turn our heat down. And saute the onions, sorry, I said mushrooms earlier, but our onions until they get lovely translucent, like so. Nice and soft is what we're looking for. This is a very rustic Italian style dish. We're going to uh, take some garlic. I'm going to crush it with our hand first. And this is the fastest way to peel garlic. Now we have this beautiful garlic. This garlic actually is from my father's organic farm, Henders Organic Farm. So now that we have our garlic um, cut and peeled, we're gonna cut them up into very fine mince. So mince garlic. You can use a marking plane for this or a garlic press if you have one. You should always use fresh garlic though. Fresh garlic is so much better than garlic powder or anything like that. This is so much more fragrant, and so much more potent will make your food taste so much better than other people's. And now the garlic goes in with the onions. We want to do this now because we add the garlic first, the garlic could burn in the hot butter, and burnt garlic can destroy a dish. A 
We are now gonna add our rice to the sauteing onions and our garlic. And I don't wish you could smell this because it smells absolutely wonderful. We're gonna stir in the rice into the hot fat of the butter and the onions, and we're gonna cook the rice this way until the onions and the, the butter, uh, sorry, the, the rice rather, uh, becomes translucent, almost see-through. We're gonna add some white wine. I don't have any white wine today, but I do have some sherry. I'm gonna splash a little bit of sherry in with the rice. We're gonna cook this now until it's almost completely dry. All the sherry gets evaporated. We are now gonna add some stock to our risotto mixture to allow it to simmer. Now traditionally you wanna use hot stock for this and ladle in a little at a time. So I'm gonna use a little bit of right now and ladle some more in later. Our mushrooms have rehydrated in the time that we're making the rice. Look about how beautiful they are now. They've enlarged quite a bit. And look at the liquid. See how beautiful dark it is? This has a lot of flavor. And we'll add some of this lovely liquid to the, to the mushrooms, uh, from the mushrooms to the stock as well to add additional mushroom flavor to our risotto. We're just gonna strain the mushrooms in a strainer. That we have rehydrated earlier. And we're gonna throw them out onto our cutting board. They're still quite large. So we're gonna pass over it with a knife just to make sure that they're small enough to be bite-sized. There's a collection of mushrooms here, including uh, some portobello, uh, some dried portobello, some chanterelles, and uh, some oyster mushrooms. Now that our mushrooms are now bite-sized, we're gonna to toss them into our rice mixture, just like so. Finally, we have some fresh herbs here. These are harvested from my garden. I have some beautiful rosemary, and rosemary and mushrooms are some of the most delicious flavors that match well together. It's like forest mushrooms and the earthy flavors of forest. So we're gonna pick off some beautiful leaves. This is so aromatic. I'm wearing a mask, an N95 mask, and I can still smell the rosemary. That's how potent it is. We're going to go ahead now and cut the rosemary up into a fine, fine cut. And now in with the mushrooms on top of everything else. We're gonna stir, and we're gonna keep stirring until the rice is fully hydrated. And about 20 minutes is gonna take for this to be finished and cooked. All right, guys, so all we have to do now is keep an eye on the stock level and slowly add more stock when you see the stock level drip dripping down until the rice is fully cooked. We wanna cook the rice to an al dente, which means a little bit of bite to it. So while this is cooking, we're gonna to transition to our, our chicken breast. All right, it's now time for the chicken. So as you saw earlier, we cut this chicken breast out of a whole chicken. We're gonna go ahead and give it sort of the standard like bistro way of cooking, classical way of cooking a chicken breast from raw, right into a pan. We're gonna use the oven to finish it as well to have it uh, fully cooked over there to, to help us along the way. So first thing we're gonna do, is, and it's always the most important part, is we're gonna season this chicken. Seasoning is the single most important thing you can do to your food to make it taste better. For this, we're gonna be very simple. We're gonna use some fresh cracked pepper and some salt. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna now season the chicken by sprinkling some salt over top of the chicken on both sides. Remember, the chicken is very, very dirty. We want to be careful of cross-contamination. So make sure all your vegetables and things from the risotto and the roast with vegetables are all cleaned up and this is done by itself in isolation. So no one gets sick. All right, guys, we have a preheated pan. We're gonna go ahead and add a tiny little bit of olive oil. And a classic mixture for this is gonna be a little bit of butter. I have some, some butter here as well. I'm gonna get this butter and oil mixing together 
And this is going to help give us an increased smoke point and add some delicious flavor from the butter as well. So once the butter is fully melted, we're going to go ahead and add the chicken breast skin side down right onto the pan. We're then going to go over to our fresh herbs and sprinkle some of that rosemary that we had in before, and some, some parsley, some thyme if you have it as well. All go in there just to for some time to get that nice and aromatic. We're not going to fully cook the chicken breast here. This is just going to be giving a color and an aromatic flavor. Okay. We're going to add a clove of garlic to it as well. Peel on. Just crushed. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over. And you see a beautiful golden skin on top, which is what you're looking for. All that oil and butter that we have there is going to be aromatized by the beautiful herbs that we have in there. And it's going to be really delicious. We're going to take this now and transfer it from this pan into an oven to finish cooking. All right, the chicken is ready. Let's get it going. The chicken is now roasted perfectly and we're going to take it out of the oven. Now this is super hot. And if we cut this chicken now, it's going to bleed everywhere. All those juices are going to bleed everywhere else. We need it allowed to rest. So we're going to take it out of the pan that we were cooking in earlier, like so, with all that butter, all the butter. And we're going to transfer it over to a area to rest. So this is going to sit there just for about five minutes or ready to plate it. And this will allow the juices to redistribute inside the chicken breast and make it nice and juicy. Now let's make a quick and fun pan sauce. Look right here. Do you see all those brown bits left over from the making of the chicken? That's where the flavor is. So we're gonna turn this beautiful burn brown bits into a delicious, simple sauce. First, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the heat back onto our pan. We're gonna hit it with some fresh butter, like so. And we're also going to now mix it with some flour. And this flour is just, uh, just plain all-purpose flour. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn this into what's called a roux. A roux is a combination of flour and butter, or flour and fat, in equal parts. And this is going to give us a base to thicken our sauce. And it's a lot easier to thicken a sauce using this method, and it tastes better than, say, using flour and water. So we're going to slowly cook this flour and butter mixture into this, all these lovely, wonderful burnt bits that we had. So remember our risotto had some sherry in it. We're going to go ahead and hit it with some sherry now in a second as well to help deglaze the pan and some chicken stock to make it a lute sauce. So there we go. We're going to allow this to cook for a few minutes to cook all the flavor of the raw flour out. And it shouldn't take very long. I can see now it's getting very foamy and very delicious. And it smells really, really nice. Almost like shortbread. Better than shortbread. Kind of like shortbread chicken, if that makes any sense. We're going to go ahead now and hit it with a little bit of a sherry to help you glaze the pan a little bit. We're going to use our spoon again. It's still quite hot from the oven, so I'm going to lay a, a, a pan over it to stir in this sherry to release all the brown bits off the pan. Okay, we're going to leave that for a second. I'm going to grab some delicious chicken stock again, and this is going to be the base of our sauce, like so. Pour right in on top of everything. And allow this to now thicken with the flour mixture, mixing it all in. And as you can see now, guys, in a few minutes, 
it's been it's thickened up. Look at that. Look how luscious the sauce is. It's like velvet. Don't worry about the bits into it, the, pea, the, the herbs and the other bits of um, chicken bits and stuff. We're going to strain those away into a nice sauce. But what we're looking for is called nappe. So we close back of a spoon like that, and you know it's done. We're going to go ahead now and add our finishing touch. We're going to add a little bit of cream to the to the sauce to turn it into a velouté, into a lovely separate sauce. Okay. And our sauce is completed. We're going to adjust the seasoning next. And making sure that all the salt and pepper is fine into it. I just taste it. It's great. It needs a lot of salt though. That pinch of pepper. Oh, last spoon. <laughs> I need to get a new spoon now to taste it. Turn off the heat now. The sauce is done. Well, I'll check the seasoning. It's delicious. All right, guys, the last step now is to strain our sauce. I have a little small uh, ramekin here. We have our sauce strainer. And we're just gonna go ahead right into the container, pour the sauce in, to strain it out, just like so. All right, guys, our risotto is completed. We're gonna season it. There's been no salt added to this yet, so we're gonna add a couple heavy pinches of salt, a little bit of pepper added to it as well. And finally, the most important ingredient, some fresh, Parmesan oregano, using a microplane for this. This is gonna set this dish over the edge. Guys, I know this is an expensive ingredient, but it is really worthwhile. A small block lasts forever in your fridge and it will make your food sing. So make sure you try to save up to get this really great cheese. All right, guys, we're all done. All the components are complete and ready to go. Our chicken is rested, our risotto is made and seasoned, our vegetables are ready. Let's plate. All right, first we're gonna take our risotto and put a beautiful pile of risotto in the middle of the plate like so. Look at those mushrooms, beautiful forest mushrooms. On top, just like so. We're gonna take our now rested chicken breast and those beautiful juices that came out. Oh, don't worry about those juices, we're gonna save those. We're gonna position our chicken breast right on top of the risotto like this. We're gonna go now to our sauce that we made earlier. All those beautiful, all those beautiful juices that we had, we're gonna pour into that sauce. We don't wanna lose any of that flavor. Stir our sauce up to incorporate those delicious, delicious juices. And we're gonna push our luscious Volute Supreme sauce all over top chicken like so. Just let it drizzle over so you can see pouring like a waterfall all over. A little on the edge of the plate too for dipping, huh? We want some dips. Like so. Then finally, we have our beautiful result, our beautiful vegetables, roasted vegetables, colorful and bright. Look how they turned out. This is the first time you've seen them since out of the oven. They're beautifully caramelized and soft. We're going to go ahead and position these all along the edge of the plate like so. Almost like a little, little garden of vegetables inside the chicken breast. We're gonna finish it off. A little bit of fresh herbs. Got some parsley here for my garden, right on top. And there we go. A very simple yet elegant chicken dish. Roast chicken with risotto, roasted vegetables. Enjoy.